In today's 26 minutes Dakar, a terrible day for Quinn Coddy. And how would the others fare? A hard fought stage in the cars with two unexpected minis duking it out at the front. But who would be victor? And in the quads, would this be the day where we finally see the Patronelli's true colours? In Dakar World, we discover a Dakar first with the quietest car on the rally. But why? While in Dakar Legend, we remember the Marrow Brothers and the beginnings of the privateer manufacturer Jewel. All the news, all the action on this all-new 26 Minutes Dakar, San Rafael to San Juan. Previously in the bikes, Mark Kummer took the lead of the rally by winning between Santa Rosa and San Rafael. The Spaniard now has a two and a half minute lead going into today. Yep, I won the stage and we are the leaders. But the truth is, it's not that important. I like Juan, Juan Barreda very much. I think he's riding very well. Juan Barreda impressed in the second stage, getting a top three position. A surprising result for the Spaniard, who's only on his second Dakar. My target is to keep on making good stages without mistakes and we'll see the results after that. So the question is, can this new generation really affect the known giants of the bikes? With most of the route to San Juan held over a thousand meters, this 270 kilometer stage is gonna be a real test for man and machine. As the rally moves closer to the Andes, another early wake up call for the bikers. The fatigue and especially the heat were on the day's menu. And it was certainly to be an eventful day in the fight for the title. After capturing his first special in 2012, Mark Comma, the new overall leader, was to open the way on this day's special. And it started very well for the Catalan on his 450 KTM. He remained clear of his main rival, Cyril Depré, at least up until CP3. At the junction where the cars and bike races go apart, the Spaniard went on the car track and rode for eight kilometers before having to turn back, losing precious time. He eventually reached the finishing line with a 13 minute deficit. I tried to push to reduce the gap. And I guess this sort of thing happens. Yesterday was my day, today isn't. I'll try to hit back tomorrow. Hard. On the other hand, Cyril Depré had the perfect run. Avoiding the navigation of mistakes, he then flew to victory. His first on this rally is 24th on a Dakar. Taking it easy and not pushing too hard during the first two days, he hit back. Cyril Depré takes command of the overall. That's a lot more like what he wanted to do. After a moment, I couldn't see any tracks in front of me. I didn't know really what was going on. And now I'm first. I was just told that Kama wasn't here yet. The good news is he isn't injured, but basically it should be a good day uh, and a good operation for me. After a fairly quiet start to the rally, Franz Verhoeven hit back hard on his brand new Sherco. The Dutchman proved he was still has the speed and the talent. Starting way back, he eventually captured the second fastest time. He's still eight minutes slower than the prayer over this stage. Also rather quiet, at the start of the rally, Portuguese Paulo Gonçalves managed his best performance so far on his new Husqvarna. The experienced rider captured third spot, moving up to seventh in the overall standings. A good but rough ride for the speedy Goncalves. He did indeed bite the dust once or twice. A 
Now the man that's been rather quiet for the first few days is the Yamaha Helder Rodriguez. He was third on the podium last year and he's known for his quiet but consistent riding. On his Yamaha 450, he showed he was still well in contention for this 2012 edition, capturing four spots on today's stage. Quinn Coddy was hoping to gain some time after suffering mechanical problems yesterday. It was one of those days to forget. So on his Honda, he decided to push really very hard, overtaking rider after rider. too hard. In the final part of the special, he hit the dust hard. A severe crash for the Baja 1000 legend. I don't know what happened. Where's my bike? Yeah, 10 meters. <coughs> Destroyed. Destroyed? Yeah. Wow. Clearly injured. It's the end of the Dakar for the American who broke his shoulder and flew back to the bivouac by helicopter. A lot was expected from the young Juan Bereda Boer on his Husqvarna, third on the previous day he was just behind the likes of Coman Dupre. Would he be able to keep up with the pace of the more experienced riders? Well, no, he was to suffer as well. A spectacular crash. Thankfully, however, he was able to hop back on his bike and finish the special, losing 40 minutes on the day's winner. Moreira is now 20th overall. So, on today's stage, Dupre beats Verhoeven by eight and a half minutes. Congalves just two seconds back. Rodriguez and Duclerc round out the top five. And in the general standings, Dupre ahead of Coma now in second, Castor up to third, Lopez and Rodriguez round out those top five positions. A very demanding stage for the men on the quads. The fastest, though, was Poland's Lukas Lasuek. He, however, is not classified in the official standings because his machine is considered a prototype. Second at the previous stage, Argentinian Thomas Maffei was second in the quad standings, but still four minutes slower than Lasuek. He was beaten, however, by Marcus Patronelli. Still on target for the title after triumphing in 2010, Patronelli enjoyed another solid ride, closing on on the podium spot and winning the stage. <laughs> 